stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you a live example. Welcome everyone to Electrician HQ's video on contactors. What are they and how do they work? Uh, well, a contactor is basically just a switch and I'll explain why. Um, so this contactor here is a 30 amp three phase contactor and the coil has a uh, runs on 120 volts so basically uh just like imagine a disconnect switch you have your line on one on the top you have your load on the bottom so basically it's the same way here but there's no contact between the line and the load between l1 and t1 l2 t2 l3 t3 there's no contact as as it is now the way it gets contact is you bring 120 volts because this one's rated for 120 to the coil there's a coil in here and uh it's wrapped around here and once you bring 120 volts to that coil it energizes it magnetizes too and this gets pulled in by the magnet once that's pulled in you have contact between l1 t1 l2 t2 l3 t3 so basically like a switch so how do you get power to the coil we well, have your contacts here a1 and a2 so basically you bring your your hot from your uh, <clears throat> you bring your hot from your 120 volt line here you bring your neutral from your 120 volt line here and you're running power through it once that coil is energized um, and magnetized it pulls in and closes the contacts and you have a closed circuit now what are what are contactors good for well let's say you let's say this contactor was 100 amps for example and you want to operate a motor with a simple switch like this well you can't put 100 amps on these terminals i mean they're going to burn up right away what you do is run your 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 power your control voltage from here to these contacts and then once you turn this switch on you magnetize the coil and you have contact here so you can operate a hundred amp three phase motor or even a 200 amp they have all different sizes of contactors you can operate a whole lot of amps and volts with a 120 volt 15 amp switch so that's pretty amazing and useful in the field so there's a lot of different type of contactors. This is a three pole, 120 volt coil. Make sure when you're installing these that you look at the coil voltage. A lot of times it's 120 for like 30 amp contactors and up, 20 amp contactors and up. But if it's any other voltage and let's say you got a 24 volt contactor and you put 120, you're gonna fry it. So here's another con example of a contactor. They always come with these nice screws i mean usually most of the time they come with these nice screws here you can mount it into your enclosure box um so yeah this is a two pole single phase contactor um this one is also a 120 volt coil and yeah operates the same l1 l2 uh l1 t1 l2 t2 once you energize this coil using the terminals on this side, these are your control terminals. Sometimes they're on different locations. Here it's on the sides. Here the control terminals are on top. Once you wire your power from to these terminals, the power between these gets connected uh, through the magnet. You don't see the switch here like on this one, but there's a coil in there and it will pull in, pull in when it's powered. Now let's see the... Uh, this one that I was tinkering with a little, I kind of demolished it. Uh, but just for example, I want to show you guys how how the insides look. So yeah, this contactor is a uh, it's a three pole contactor. Uh, okay, here's our A one and A two. So you see all, all of these are different contactors, different brands, different whatever, different look. This one you have your A1, A2 on top, this one on the side, this one here. But it's all kind of uh, 
standardized, you know, you'll, you, you'll find these terminals. So you bring your, your A1, your control circuit to A1 and A2. This one is three phase also, if you can recognize it's kind of demolished, but you would have a terminal here, terminal here, terminal here, terminal here. So L1, L2, L3, T1, T2, T3. Once you get power to A1 and A2, your coil gets energized. This is a 120 volt coil also. You can see it here a little bit. Yeah, there it is. So once you energize that coil, uh, it gets magnetized and this pulls in. You see these contacts here? They make contact when that magnet pulls. So let's say you got your control circuit wired from here to A1, A2. Okay, so let's say we turn this switch on. This pulls in right away. And um, you shut it off. This is no longer magnetized. There's no power running through the control circuit. This opens up. But yeah, I thought it might be interesting to see how once the control terminals A1 and A2 get power, how it pulls in, you would have a piece of metal here. Here you can see it a lot better once you give it power. So yeah, that's it. I like to uh, explain things uh, simply and you know these can look very confusing in, in, in my first year starting out if I saw this I would be like what this contraption I have no idea actually I was just uh, telling my one of my apprentices the other day to wire uh, these contactors and he was like I can't do that and I told him why not um, it's very simple and I explained it to him in exactly the same way and now he's doing contactors, no problem. It, it's just a switch. It's just a switch. Um, yeah. So here is a contactor wired on a single pole switch. So basically, let's say this contactor could be 100 amps or however many amps. But it's powered by this 15, 20 amp switch, whatever it is. A uh, uh, very low amperage switch can power a high amperage contactor so uh, basically I have my line from the circuit breaker to the switch from the switch to the A2 terminal I got my neutral directly from the circuit breaker to A1 uh, the screw is missing there but it's kind of tucked in there so I could have done this on the, the I could have done this on the contactors that are in better condition, but I kind of want you guys to see the inner mechanism of this. So once I turn this switch on, this magnet is going to pull in, and the, the current is going to flow here between L1 and T1. And if there was still the uh, metal pieces here, it would flow from L2, L1, L2 to T2, L3 to T3. So let's see how this works i flip the switch on the magnet pulls in we have contact all right power is running through here powering whatever thing may be wired to this i shut the switch off the magnet releases so you could probably see from this example what i mean that this is just a switch Kind of a switch operating another switch. Very useful in the field. Uh, has a lot of applications. And um, yeah, it goes without saying, but don't try this at home. This isn't the safest setup, but I am an electrician by trade. And yeah, don't, don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, I hope this helps. I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below.